but I believe you already uh, answered this with Keith, but again, just, just for anybody saying uh, uh, why why this level of opponent, even though these guys are 25-0 and 0 Schwartz and now 20-0 and 0 Valin, what do, you, what do you think about that, that they feel the opponents could be better, even though they're supposed to be fights to keep well, it let's sharp? Well, let's say that I agree. I'm not saying I do agree, but let's say that I did agree the opponents won <laughs> to the level of what these people are saying. Tyson had six months after his comeback, after the layoff of the story that everybody knows about, signed to fight the most dangerous fighter in world boxing. Yeah, after six months, took a massive risk, and Deontay Wilder took a massive risk. Then, within six months of that fight, if that, signed to fight a rematch. So, if the fans want to see the best be the best, no problem. If, if you're not happy with, with the way he's doing, the, the way this has gone. If people think he's boxing lower caliber, I don't believe so. If people do think that, then what do you want him to do? Keep boxing number four and number five. Let number four and number five, the next number four and number five. Then box the next number four and number five. And never see number one fight number two. You can never please everybody, unfortunately. And it's just keeping sharp anyways, right? It's keeping the... More than keeping sharp, it's a fight against a six foot six out with a good pedigree, who I'm sure will come to win. I know that he's determined because he's moved away from home, living in New York, to work his ass off to, to chase his dreams. And if you've got any motivation, God rest his soul, his father passed away, yeah. you know, he's going to be a hungry man, believe me. Because when, when guys only fight two times a year, the fans then, they complain about, you need to be more active. So I mean, Tyson's doing it, and yet they find a way well, to listen, complain. Well, listen, Floyd has some resume, does he not? Yeah. They always criticise him. Yep. You can do it. Sometimes still find yourself saying, "How the hell does the person get up and walk with the fight?" Yeah, I do. Yeah, sometimes, but he never fails to surprise me. That's the truth. Um, to be honest, I, you know, I remember, I remember the shot landing. I remember thinking, when somebody gets knocked down, even a heavy knockdown, some part of the body is moving. They're rolling over. Their head's moving. The foot's twitching. The hand moving. There was. I remember him being still. Nothing moving. I was thinking this. I'm not going to say the word, but let's say flip, and uh, and I ended up in a bit of a commotion with the commission. I remember turning around and seeing him get up and I was like, what is going on here? He's like, Shoo. But I said before the fight that he's a freak of nature, and that's exactly what he is. There's footage of you getting into the commission as Tyson. How much of that was just But the time, obviously, when he went down, I wanted to have a look. I needed to have a look. Nobody knows Tyson better than me. Um, so I got up to have a look and assess the situation. Assess, you know, I know that Deontay Wilder is a formidable finisher. And my fighter's health is my main priority. So I wanted to have a look and the commission called me back. And obviously, I, I wanted to assess the situation. Um, so there was a problem with the commission over that, but we got around. So take me to the moment when he gets up. What's the next thought for you? I'm thinking to myself, do I need to stop this fight? Because I knew that Deontay was a formidable finisher. So I'm thinking, do I need to stop this fight? Do I need to tell this, this commissioner to tell the ref to stop the fight? But I was also thinking, how long is that going to take? Um, I knew that Tyson needed to buy some valuable seconds. And then, you know, as I'm telling him to hold, he decides to put his hands behind his back and fire some punches back and I'm thinking, but like I said, he's a freak of nature. He actually rocked Wilder. He did, yeah, he rocked Wilder back and that was, you know, that was very, very important. He needed to, he needed to pull something out the back. And like I said, I will criticise where I feel criticism is needed, but I'll also give credit where credit is needed. Going into that last round, Deontay Wilder was told, you need to find something, and he found it. That's a special human being to be able to do that. Uh, and at that moment when Tyson needed to find a shot, to buy himself some valuable seconds, he found a shot. And that day are two special men, that's for sure. Were you able to find out how much time was there? Did you see the clock or anything? Quickly see so much happened. What, how long was left in the round? Yeah, yeah. I didn't, but I knew, you know, when you when you do this job day in, day out, you, I, I can give you three minutes within probably ten seconds. Um, so I knew, I knew roughly, yeah, yeah I, I knew roughly, I knew there was plenty of time left in the round. I knew Wilder was a little bit finisher, like I say so. Um, 
like I say, it's, it's, a, it's a freak of nature, Tyson, and uh, both men, although they'll give each other a bit of stick in that, they'll always forever share a special bond for sharing such a special fight in the history of boxing. That fight goes further than boxing. What Tyson did in that 12th round goes further than boxing because his story, where he come from, what he managed to overcome, the risk that he took, and the way he handled himself after the fight, and the way he spoke after the fight, and how he's been so outspoken about mental health, he's changed a lot of people's lives. And uh, lots of people that he never even met or never will meet. So like I say, they're, they're uh, both of them special characters and they'll forever share that. You know, as soon as, soon as we get to the rematch, will be, you can give me a big question about the wild that you got up the shot that nobody else is talking There will be those, but listen, if, if, if I, let's say, let's say I was, I was in charge of the whole situation, I was drawing a story out and I could have said, right, if I was on Deontay Wilder's team, I could have picked when to land, not one, but two clean shots, I would have dropped that in the 12th round. With plenty of time left to finish the job if needed. But you couldn't have picked a better time for him to land those shots. And he still couldn't get the job done. I mean, you call it freak of nature. I, I gotta think that Wilder's going to He's gonna be thinking that. And he's also gonna be thinking there's a big, big chance of a big, <coughs> big chance that he could be made to look silly in that ring match. He knows that, he's fully aware of that, but that'll work as motivation for him. Tyson's fully aware that Deontay Wilder is the most dangerous man in, 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 in world boxing. I think that's correct. And, you know, that's why they're earning this the shit truck load of money, like I said, because they took a risk on fighting each other. Twice. God willing, both come through their fights, as I said. And then, uh, just last one for me, where did you really begin and get that great boxing IQ that you have? Um, that's just an opinion about whether it's great or not. Some would say he has no idea what he's talking about and just makes it up. But were you just a fan at first? Did you train yourself? Or? Yeah, I trained boxing as an amateur. I, uh, spent, I got into coaching very young, went through training qualifications, nutritional qualifications. I was lucky enough to spend a lot around a British boxing legend trainer in uh, Jimmy Tibbs. And learned a hell of a lot there. Also, through other areas, there was a football coach. His name was Colin Rigg. And the way he broke down, the way he broke down football and sport and simplified it was something that I took and took into into coaching and took into boxing. And I learned a hell of a lot from that and from him. So, from lots of different areas, um, took little bits from this, little bits from that, little bits from that, and I still forever do, you know, because the moment that you think you know it all, kind of proof. Forget about it, and that's as a fighter, as a coach, or anything. If you're motivated about doing something, you always want to improve. I'm sure you guys, reporters, might say, Do you know what? I like the way I like that question, but I'm going to adapt it and I might make it add that in. Or I like the way this is done, or I like the way that is done. You always want to get better if you're motivated, and I'm very, very motivated. That's for sure. Thanks, man. Thanks, man.